Zendikar, a plain in peril. The battle against the Eldrazi cannot succeed without you. That's right, young planeswalker. Only you can save this world. Taking all of your money, pile it onto the table and buy as many Jaces as you can. No, no, we need more Jaces than that to defeat the Eldrazi. Good, good. Now Gideons. You need Gideons as well. You need all the Gideons. We must fill every Hedron with Gideons. More money, Planeswalker. We need more money. Okay, listen, if you want to save Zendikar, you are going to have to bust out your credit card. Or maybe not, because for less than the price of an event deck, you can ride into Friday Night Magic with the classiest deck in standard. Zulaport Sacrifice. Zulaport Sacrifice is an aristocrat-style deck which uses Nantuko Husk and Rogue's Passage to make a gigantic, unblockable creature to beat your opponents into submission with. It also beats these out-of-control standard prices into submission as well, because the entire deck can be put together for about $20. Let's take a look. Nantuko Husk gets plus two plus two each time you sacrifice a creature, and Rogue's Passage will let you make target creature unblockable. But there's more to the deck than just that. Zulaport Cutthroat and Grim Horus specs create amazing synergy with our creature deaths. The Cutthroat will gain us life and simultaneously have our opponents each lose a life every time a creature of ours dies. This by itself puts major pressure on the board and means we don't even need to swing with a 2020 husk because each creature it eats will lose our opponent a life. The Horus specs is a card draw engine here, albeit only for non-token creatures of ours that die. With either or both of these on the board, our deck is providing major value. So obviously, with a sacrifice strategy, we are going to need some major token generation. Playsets of Blisterpod, Carrier Thrall, and Catacomb Sifter not only generate tokens, but tokens which can be sacrificed for mana to help us outrace our opponents. Sultai Emissary doesn't exactly create a token upon death, but it does allow us to manifest the top card of our library. This is actually a lot of value because we can sack the top card as a creature or if it is a spell we need, cast it and have essentially gotten a free card draw. What about removal? Merciless Executioner and Fleshbag Marauder both force each player to sacrifice a creature when they come into play. For us, with Cutthroat and Horus Specs in play, that's value. For our opponents, it's trouble. As far as targeted removal goes, the deck runs Bone Splinters, which destroys target creature for only one black mana, but with the cost of our need to sacrifice a creature as well. Again, we have chumps for days in this deck, and with Cutthroat and Horus Specs in play, this just gets us added value. Runus Path is straight up targeted removal with the bonus of Awaken, which, with all these mana generating tokens, can be relevant a lot earlier in the game than usual. The deck also runs a few complete disregard to exile something of our opponents with mana three or less. Dutiful Return is very important in that we need both the option to bring some of these token generators back into play, but also if our husk or cutthroat get destroyed, we need the ability to bring them back as well. The mana base here is very straightforward and very affordable. We're practically mono black, with just a hint of green splashed in. So we are running 10 swamps and 4 forests, a playset of evolving wilds and jungle hollows for mana fixing, and of course Rogue's Passage so our husk can gobble down token spawns and swing for lethal without being blocked. The sideboard, as always, always is highly customizable, but I recommend straight out going for three Despise and three Duress, as these are catch-all answers to most of what your opponent may be bringing in against you. And while you don't win games by gaining life, Feed the Clan can help you hang in quite a while longer, especially since that Ferocious can trigger if you use a Husk to gobble down a few tokens before casting it. Ultimate Price and Complete Disregard if you are in need of more removal than the main board runs, and I'm a big fan of a couple Guramong Anglers for adding threat and board presence. The deck costs only about $20. So if you're not currently in standard, if you don't know where to start in standard, if you just want to play standard but can't afford it, then this is the deck for you. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to subscribe, like, share, or just by leaving a comment. And remember, you can't play magic at Target or Walmart. So when you spend money, try and spend it where you spend time playing 
playing this game. And that's at your local game store whenever possible. You're supporting your magic community. Yeah, so that's interesting. So when you're when you're a new player uh, coming into Magic, mulligans are a very hard thing to learn. They totally you are. You know, you sit there and you stare at your hand and you're like, uh, I have no idea if I'm supposed to keep this or not. Based Absolutely. on that. It is, it is, I think, very unique in, its, in the fact that it can be literally a pivotal decision. There's so many, like, minuscule decisions that go into, into... Um, deciding, you know, whether you win or lose a game of Magic, in addition to variants. But mulligans are sometimes... It's like, a giant it's decision. Yep, it, it can be mm -hmm. the one decision that determines whether you win or lose. Um, and so, I, like I said, I've been trying to make better mulligan decisions. Sure. So I thought we could look at it and break it down a little bit um, about, like, what, do you, what are you looking at when you're thinking about a mulligan? 